We're all thinking of those affected by this horrible, heartbreaking, tragic fire in Conestoga Drive. I want to thank first responders for their tireless efforts, and our thoughts are with friends, family, and loved ones, as always. So glad to be here in Brampton today with uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, Ministers Gould, Hussein, Kara, and Al Khabra, and so many members of our outstanding Liberal team here in Ontario. Uh, and it's always great. Uh, to be making big announcements for Ontarian families alongside uh, Premier Ford. Doug, it's so good uh, that we're again together today uh, to make this big announcement. Thank you to uh, Minister Lecce and others as well. We're also joined by Okosua Matthews, the Vice Chair of the YMCA Greater Toronto Board of Directors, uh, and a lot of amazing uh, people from uh, here at the y YMCA uh, to families and kids uh, to extraordinary childcare advocates and activists who are very, very pleased to see this happening today, as we are all with such great news for families. We know kids deserve the best start in life, and parents, especially moms, shouldn't have to choose between family or a career. A year ago, we said we would build a national system to make childcare more affordable and accessible everywhere in Canada, and today we continue to deliver on that promise. We have reached a multi-year agreement with Ontario that will cut fees by an average of 25 per cent, and parents will start seeing savings across Ontario in the coming weeks, and cut fees in half on average by the end of this year, savings per child of about, <clears throat> by the end of 2022, of an average of about $6,000 a year. That is real money for families at a time where we know cost of living continue to go up, the situation in Ukraine, the coming out of COVID, the challenges that our economies are facing means this is real money that will stay in the pockets of families this year to help with everything else. We're going to meet our $10 a day target in four years and at the same time create 86,000 new spaces by the end of 2026 across Ontario. I know Ontario parents have been wondering for a while when this was going to happen. Well, we worked hard to get this deal done because you deserve affordable childcare like all, Ontario, uh, all Canadian parents. For the families of Ontario, L'entente va faire families, une vraie difference. The agreement will make a real difference. It's more money in your pockets for groceries, gas. Canadians can count on the government to continue to deliver. Including Ontario, we've reached childcare agreements with all provinces and territories across the country, which means. This means that Canadians, all Canadians fam Canadian families from coast to coast to coast, will benefit from quality, early learning, accessible, affordable childcare, which is a historic moment for parents, for kids, for families, but also for businesses across the country. We know the economic growth that is unlocked when moms no longer have to choose between having a family or advancing their career. It's a benefit not just to families, not just to kids, but to all of us. And that's what's so exciting. And I want to thank Deputy Prime Minister Freeland for putting it in last year's budget and making it a reality alongside Ministers Gould and Hussein. Ahmed, you negotiated uh, the first ones. Uh, Karina, you brought it home in some very tricky negotiations. Uh, but we are here now being able to say that childcare is becoming a reality for all Canadians right across the country. In less than 12 months, we went from not having national child care towards being on the road toward it. And there's lots of work still to do to make sure we're following up and getting that $10 a day 
reality within five years, right across the country, that we're reducing fees, that we're encouraging more early childhood educators to step up with better pay, better supports, better recognition of the extraordinary job they do. But this is the track we are finally on. Accessible, high-quality childcare is key to building a stronger future, a more resilient economy, and growing the middle class. I think of all the families and parents I've met across the country who told me how badly they needed more accessible, more affordable childcare. Many families across the country are already seeing significant savings, and now families in Ontario who are facing extremely high costs will see them very soon. This is real positive change, and our government will keep working to make sure everyone has what they need to succeed. Avec l'annonce d'aujourd'hui, on continue de bâtir une relance économique. We're continuing to, to do a economic recovery for all Canadians. In less than two years, we've signed agreements with all provinces and territories for affordable child care throughout the country and more room for families so they don't have to wait long on waiting lists. We'll always be there for families and grow the middle class. For all Canadians. And I'm now very pleased to pass it over to our friend, Premier Ford. Doug. Well, good, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here in, in Brampton at, at the Y. Um, before I begin, I want to express just how sad I was to learn of the tragic deaths of a, a family here in Peel, including the loss of, of three precious children. And I just can't uh, imagine uh, the hurt being felt by the family and friends and the entire community. You'll be all in our, our prayers. On behalf of Minister Lecce, Sicaria, and Betham Falvey, along with MPP Sandu, I want to welcome the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, and Minister Gould to Brampton, and uh, my, my good buddy that's been, uh, Gabre, that you've been following me around, I've been following you around <laughs> for the last week, which is, which is actually great news. Uh, <laughs> together, we're here to provide real relief to parents and families in Ontario. As we announce an agreement worth over $13 billion to deliver $10 a day childcare to moms and dads across the province. As a government, we're laser focused on finding more ways to keep costs down for Ontario families. Most recently, we did so by eliminating the cost of the license plate stickers while also refunding the fees paid over the past two years. And we're eliminating unfair road tolls on Highway 412 and 418. This deal will immediately reduce the cost of childcare in Ontario and provide refunds retroactive to April 1st. As the Prime Minister mentioned, April 1st is 25% and at the end of the year is another uh, 25%, so really instantly you're seeing the results. This is the next step we're taking to keep costs down for people in our province. I want to thank our federal partners for their collaboration, which was critical in landing this childcare agreement. It's a great deal for Ontario parents and the right deal for Ontarians. It's a deal that provides flexibility in how we allocate federal funding. Flexibility that was critical to making this program work in Ontario. It includes built-in protections for Ontario taxpayers against any shortfalls, including an automatic review in year three to make sure the actual costs of the program are funded. And it's a deal that secures out-year funding to underscore the long-term commitment of both governments to the success of this program. It shows what we can accomplish working together. So I want to thank my federal colleagues again for their participation and collaboration. My friends, whether it's through the $10 a day childcare or a provincial childcare tax credit or all day kindergarten, parents in Ontario now have access to many low cost options for childcare and can tailor their choices to their own unique needs. As they do, our government will continue fighting to keep costs low for parents and families. Thank you and may God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll hand it over to my very good friend, Deputy Premier Christia Freeland. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you very much, Doug Premier, for that 
Uh, and thank you to you and your team for the collaboration that made it possible for us to get this deal done. This is such a great day for Ontario. It is such a great day for Canada. And I do, like the Prime Minister and the Premier, want to say uh, how sad we all are about the tragedy here. Less than a year ago, we presented a plan targeting the creation of affordable childcare to make it a reality everywhere in Canada. This is a plan which I know was um, loved by many, but many were legitimately skeptical. When we announced our plan in the budget last year, but since then, we've delivered. We have now signed agreements with provinces and territories across this whole country to deliver $10 a day early learning childcare to Canadian parents and families. Today is the culmination of all of that hard work, and I am so glad that Ontario is now part of Canada's national early learning and child care system. This is truly a historic day. It is the fruit of more than half a century of activism by Canadian feminists who have understood for a really, really long time that early learning and child care was an essential feminist policy, but also an essential economic policy. Today's announcement is possible because of their work, because they fought for this cause well before it became popular, and because they have never drop their hands in front of adversity. Today's success we share with them. I'd really like to take a moment today to recognize the so many Canadians over so many years who have made today finally possible. So thank you to the women who have spent decades fighting for early learning and child care and finally making it a reality. To the Quebec feminists who opened the door with the CPEs and this many years ago. And Paul Martin, who laid the groundwork at the federal level. To the intellectual leaders and activists, Judy Lamarche, Laura Sabia, and Monique Beguin, who convinced the government to establish a royal commission on the status of women back in 1967. And I do want to remember my own mother, who was inspired by the work of that Royal Commission and fought so hard for early learning and childcare, as did so many Canadian feminists. In the 1960s, about 35% of Canadian women between 25 to 54 were in the labour force. Today, that number is 84%. High quality, $10 a day early learning and childcare will help us do even better. It will mean that women in Canada do not have to choose between their careers and their families. And as finance minister, I can tell you, this deal comes at exactly the moment when we need it most. Labor force shortages are a choke point right now for our economy. And affordable early learning and child care is going to be such an important part of Canada's solution. Affordability is a challenge for so many Canadian families, including families here in Brampton. Affordable early learning and child care with savings that start immediately is going to be such an important part of the solution to affordability challenges for Canadian families and now for Ontario families. Early learning and childcare is going to help us build an economy 
and a country that is stronger, that is more prosperous for all Canadians, starting with the very, very youngest. So, so wonderful to be here. Thank you to everyone who worked on this agreement, uh, including my two amazing colleagues, Ahmed Hussein, who I think is still here with his beautiful, beautiful daughter. <laughs> and who got the ball rolling. Um, and of course, my absolutely indefatigable colleague, Corinna Gould, who Prime Minister appointed her to this job and he said, you're gonna get it across the finish line. And she did. So thank you so much, Corinna. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing from you. Um, great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Christia. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here this morning. Good morning. Uh, bonjour. C'est un plaisir pour moi. It's a pleasure for me to be here today with the Prime Minister, the Vice Prime Minister, uh, Prime Minister Ford, uh, Minister Lecce, um, and Audible, and my colleagues for this historical announcement. To recognize Brampton MPs Sonia Sidhu and Ruby Sahoda, who have been tenacious advocates on this file uh, since we were elected back in 2015. And so please give them a I would also like to recognize the leadership of my dear friend, Minister Hussein, who has, everyone knows, uh, led the work alongside Minister Freeland to put this policy together just under a year ago. And what a ways we have come in a year. As the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, it gives me tremendous pride to be able to conclude the Canada-wide early learning and childcare negotiations. With today's announcement, Ontario is now joining all other provinces and territories in Canada to bring affordable, accessible, quality and inclusive childcare to families in this province. And as a mom in Ontario, uh, as a parent with a child in daycare in Ontario, I committed to Ontario families that we would get this agreement done for them. And here we are today delivering a historic federal investment for families in this province. I dropped off my son this morning at daycare by coming to this announcement, knowing that the families of the province will benefit from lower fees, more spaces that meet the needs of the diversity of the province, including for francophone uh, children, uh, children with disabilities, and making sure that the people we trust to take care of our children are better paid are more, re more recognized and have better access to professional development. MPC do mentioned, childcare is not a luxury. It is a necessity. Childcare advocates and the women's movement have been calling for this day for over 50 years. And I couldn't be more humbled to stand here before those trailblazers to deliver this transformative social and economic policy that will change the trajectory of our country for the better for generations to come. As Minister Freeland likes to say and has said today, this is a feminist economic policy, but also the best possible economic policy period. Who have been beating this drum for decades, thank you. Today would not have happened without your tenacity, your persistence, your commitment. We stand on your shoulders. But I'm sorry to say your work is not over. <laughs> we need your energy, your dynamism, your commitment to continue to guide us through the rollout and implementation of this new childcare system from coast to coast to coast. And today is an exciting new step here in the province of Ontario. Because of today's agreement that gives $10.2 billion from 2021 to 2026, 
The family's All right, the so well, that big system. announcement that we are waiting to hear, and of course we got the final word there from the Prime Minister, Karina Gould, of course, um, uh, giving more details, saying this is an important time, an important moment for the women's movement, who for the past five decades have been asking for this. Christian Freeland saying this is uh, critical, of course, for all women. Moms, of course, speaking there, parents indeed, uh, but it also is essential for economic policy. Uh, let's bring and senior political correspondent for CTV News Channel, Mike Le Couture, back into the conversation on this. So, as you were saying there, Mike, 86,000 new spaces for childcare by uh, 2026. But also, let's touch on what the Premier talked about. And you mentioned the timing of all of this is, of course, very, very um, critical. 25% uh, refund that's retroactive, that is on April 1st. And then another 25% happening around in June when that provincial election is set to take place. Yeah, and also let's look at the tone of this press conference mm -hmm. for a second, Angie. Uh, how many times did you hear both Prime Minister Trudeau and Premier Ford and then Deputy Prime Minister Freeland talk about my friend Doug Ford, yes. our friends in the federal government? A uh, bit of a love-in going on in Brampton there, I think. <laughs> and it's really interesting because obviously this whole let's work together and put all the, the bad stuff behind us and stop the mudslinging, that doesn't happen, obviously, when all this money is being handed out. Uh, it's a good time, right? So, But also very interesting that, you know, they're talking about how they worked very well together. And I think that may be a bit of a sign of things to come of mm. in, the, in the campaign, that Doug Ford will go into this campaign and say, look how well I can work with the federal government. Mm -hmm. Look how well uh, we've been able to do this. And even if you throw back to during all of the COVID-19 stuff and all of the procurement of the different uh, vaccines, yes, Doug Ford at a certain point had blamed the federal government, saying they weren't getting vaccines quick enough. But in the same breath, he would say, but they're still doing a great job. So I think it's interesting, obviously, when money's being handed out, everybody's happy. Sure. Uh, and, of course, the, the fact that, you know, the federal government is getting what they want, a national child care program. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that I just sort of picked up on that was really interesting um, in terms of, you know, that type of tone mm -hmm. there. And we'll see if that tone sort of continues in the questions, uh, questions and answers. Uh, but, again, the fact that this is going to make it more affordable, Karina, Gould really sort of giving her own personal um, feeling there and talking about how when she dropped off her son at daycare this morning, understanding the historic nature of this. And Freeland talking about how this will help the economy. And this yeah. is something that Doug Ford has really hit on and how she had talked about, look, that is the choke point in trying to get more women into the workforce, that women are having to decide between either childcare or or, you know, going into the workforce. And, you know, there are many friends that I have that, you know, have that question as well. Mm -hmm. Do I, uh, you know, have to pay for daycare? And what does that mean? Are we just going to have one salary as a family that's going towards daycare, whereas the other salary, uh, you know, is actually for income? And so, or do we just stay home? What do we do with that? Right. Uh, these are questions and, and, and concerns that a lot of parents have been trying to weigh. And now maybe they'll be alleviated a little more. Perhaps, exactly. And I guess the other question will come about, and you and, my, and, you and I, Mike, are both their parents. I don't qualify anymore. My kids are a little bit older, and I think your kids might be as well, that <laughs> they won't be in the daycare. We missed out on this one, Mike. But does yeah. everybody qualify? Are there going to be certain stipulations? Are there going to be certain requirements? Or when they talk about universal child care right across Canada, it is saying if you have a child of said age that requires child care or daycare or what have you, you are, you know, officially eligible regardless of what you're making or your situation or whatnot. But there it is for all Canadians. I'm wondering whether that's also going to be asked during the Q&A here or whether we're going to have more yeah. of those details pulled out. Yeah, and that's some of the questions, because I can tell you, when I had younger kids, I was in Quebec at the time, mm -hmm. growing up in Montreal, and that's where we had our kids. And the thing there was that you could try and find a space, but essentially, uh, as soon as a mother is pregnant, she's got to put her name on a mm -hmm. waiting list. And that was one of the problems with the Quebec system. Um, and, and at this point, you know, not living there, I don't know if that continues to be an issue, but that was one of the sticking points, is that it was, uh, you know, universal. There was a $10 a day daycare, 
but there weren't all the spaces for it. Right. Uh, and, and that may be one of the issues with this as well. Um, I know that they're going to create over 86,000 spaces uh, by, the, by the year 2026, but at the same time, will there be enough spaces at $10 a day? Mm -hmm. Unclear. And, and that's some of the conversations and some of the discussions that parents sometimes have to have looking at this and going, yeah, the universal system is there, and that system you know, can be accessible, but sometimes it's not that accessible because of the limited amount of spaces yeah. in it. And so I know in Quebec, you had to make those decisions. Do I put them in another private daycare instead? Uh, because there simply isn't any space. Exactly. And I do know, uh, in being in Ontario, once you got pregnant, if you're looking for childcare, you did have to put your name on a list in hopes that you were going to yeah. be able to get a spot. Um, really quickly then, Mike, now we're sort of, as we're looking long term, in the next few months now, as we're leading up to this provincial election, a very big one, of course, in Ontario, Premier Doug Ford is going to be looking again to get a majority government here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, this deal is something that obviously is something that he can talk to people on the doorstep and say, look what I was able to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the proof of, of my record is right there. This is what we're able to do with the federal government, uh, and this is why I deserve another term. Uh, and also, I think the tone that he set as we were talking at the beginning of this, uh, you know, trying to say that he can work with the federal government and he does have a good re working relationship with them to get things done. That is something that Ford has really tried to sort of, uh, you know, talk about as himself. Somebody who gets things done. And the fact that he was able to get this over the finish line so close to the election, I think for him, he'll try and keep that top of mind and certainly the top of that pamphlet as he's handing it to somebody on the doorstep and saying, look at all my accomplishments. I was able to get um, $10 a day daycare inked. And so, you know, you'll want me in government so that you don't have another um, party that would come and undo mm -hmm. it. Although I don't think the, the NDP or, or liberals here in Ontario would try and undo that. No, certainly not. We know it's something that they've been on side with calling for as well. All right, senior political correspondent for CTV News Channel, Mike LeCouture. Thank you so much for this, Mike. Appreciate you breaking it down That's for us. For sure. All right, we take you back over to Brampton now. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Ontario Premier Doug Ford, announcing that deal on child care, of course. And we were just chatting with Mike about that, getting you all the details uh, with regards to that. To another story now that we have been following very, very closely, of course, a very big um, event happening in Rome where the Catholic Church uh, culpability over the residential schools is at the heart of these historic meetings that are taking place between Indigenous leaders and Pope Francis. The Vatican Métis and Inuit delegations mm -hmm. met with the Pope this morning, the head of the Métis National Council, suggesting that she felt, quote, heard by the Pope. Cassidy Caron says the pontiff repeated the words truth, justice and healing. Caron calls the meeting an important beginning. Take a listen. One of the things that uh, we really wanted to extend to Pope Francis is that this is about our children. One of our, our survivors is very adamant in sharing that these atrocities that happened at residential schools to our Métis survivors, this happened to children. And that is no, never okay. And we need to do all that we can to protect our children because those are our future generations. Kenal says the Pope did not provide an apology, but adds they have always requested that it take place on Canadian soil. Meantime, the Archbishop of Regina was among those on hand this morning. He calls the meetings, quote, a big step in the beginning of new possibilities. What we wanted to create, what we heard from all three Indigenous groups, was the desire for people to be able to speak to the Pope directly. Uh, to tell their stories, to speak of their experiences, of their suffering, uh, and in a particular way, the experiences at residential schools. And uh, for him to be able to hear that and then respond from the heart. So from the Pope's perspective today, it was principally about listening. And I think we had the experience of him listening very deeply and engaging on a very personal level uh, with what he heard. A total of 32 Indigenous elders, leaders, survivors and youth are taking part in the Vatican meetings this week. To the latest now on the war in Ukraine, where the Russian delegates have now arrived in Istanbul ahead of tomorrow's first face-to-face -face peace talks in Kyiv, and more than, with Kyiv rather, I should say, in more than two weeks. Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Turkish counterpart are agreed in a telephone call yesterday for a meeting to be held in Istanbul. A Kremlin spokesperson says the discussions would take place face-to-face -face with Ukraine after a lack of major progress in negotiations. In separate comments, Russian Foreign Minister, Sir 
Sergei Lavrov said the meeting between Putin and Zelensky should only happen once the sides achieve progress. Meanwhile, in a video addressed to the Ukrainian people last night, Volodymyr Zelensky said his government would prioritize the, quote, territorial integrity of Ukraine at the talks. But in comments made to Russian journalists earlier Sunday, the president adopted a different tone, saying Ukraine was willing to assume neutral status and compromise over the status of the eastern Donbass region as part of a peace deal. Battlefield momentum has shifted in Ukraine's favor, and in recent weeks, Kyiv has said it believes Russia could now be more willing to compromise. All right, happening right now, U.S. Secretary of State Antonio Guterres speaking to reporters about the situation in Ukraine. Let's take a listen in. To define the arrangements necessary to make the ceasefire persist. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We just got that tail end there, but uh, clearly we're just getting a, a snippet of what he was saying there, showing some uh, hope, I guess, in terms of where the where the talks are going to go. Uh, we know that those talks between Ukraine and Russia are set to take place tomorrow. The delegates are in distant Istanbul right now, uh, and we'll keep a close eye on the progress there. But we're seeing some uh, some hopefulness um, from Antonio Guterres. To other news now, well, some people who've been fighting, fle fleeing the fighting, I should say, in Ukraine have sought refuge in the mountainous, in the mountains in western Ukraine. CNN's Salma Abdul Aziz has met up with some refugees and shared their stories. Take a listen. Nestled deep in the Carpathian Mountains, far from the bombs and bullets, lies the idyllic ski resort of Slavska. With plenty of room for those fleeing violence to find solace in the slopes. Many hotels have opened their doors to displaced families, some at no cost or discounted rates. Guests Stacy and Ramir found refuge here after Russian forces invaded their hometown of Kharkiv. During this time, we usually uh, heard um, like shells blowing up, uh, with, uh, lots of bombardment. How did you feel when you arrived? When you look at these mountains and into the news, uh, it seems like not real. And you are here, you are safe. It feel kind of guilty because uh, in the beginning I left all my family there. In After a terrifying week, mom and daughter finally squeezed onto a train out of embattled Kyiv. But where to go? Then they remembered a special family trip. Yes, we love it, this place because our summertime we, we provide here. So you had good memories here? Good memory. We have good memory. We had good memory this, in this place. I feel safe here. But I hope that this will end soon and we'll go home. Because living at home is much better because it's my home. Some have chosen less traditional accommodations. Olsa found peace for her two children in this glamping pod. Donka prokidaetsa, vona pigbihaya. My daughter wakes up every morning, opens the curtains, wipes the dew from the windows, and looks out at the view, she tells me. Yes, she loves it here. It's calming. I feel lighter. And I start to believe everything is going to be okay. For these families, this feels like the safest place in a country where it seems everywhere is a front line. Sam Abdulaziz, CNN, Slavsko, Ukraine. Well, there's a little bit more excitement at the Oscars than many viewers were expecting. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> oh, wow! You heard that. Well, after the break, we'll have more on what many are calling the slap scene around the world. Keep it here on CTV News Channel. We'll be right back. An all new Station 19, Thursday at 8 9 Mountain, only on CTV. There are some who feel winter is too long. Drive a Jeep and it doesn't feel long enough. It's the Jeep 4x4 Winter Event with great deals on select Jeep models. Get into a Jeep Wrangler for as low as 3.99% for 96 months or enjoy 10% off MSRP on Jeep Grand Cherokee plus $2,000 in loyalty cash. Don't endure winter. Embrace it at the Jeep 4x4 Winter Event. Some plan to relax, and others look for adventure. But no matter your reason for visiting, 
One thing's guaranteed. From the moment you step on this island, you feel a little lighter. Come find your island, Prince Edward Island. Whether you hold it in, let it out, or whatever this is, that's dad strength. Tylenol Muscle and Body gives dads fast acting, long lasting pain relief. Tylenol, proud supporter of dad strength. I knew I had to take charge of my life. I didn't recognize myself. Now with Jenny Craig, I've lost 27 pounds and three and a half inches. Introducing the revolutionary Max Up, the one-stop, most effective weight loss solution. Limited time offer, join now. I'm here today to enjoy the great taste of the new Tim's Harvest Breakfast Sandwich, made with plant-based Impossible Sausage. We've been seeing a lot of customers come by asking for this option. The new Tim's Harvest Breakfast Sandwich is the deliciously easy way to enjoy plant-based with great taste. I've been looking to cut down on meat. It's delicious. I enjoy that meatiness that comes through, even if there's no meat in there. This is going to be my breakfast. The new Harvest Breakfast Sandwich, made with plant-based Impossible Sausage. It's time for Tim's. Well, the Academy Awards honored the best in film was full in, uh, full of drama, I should say. And oh, the yeah. Oscar goes to... Okay, Coda. <laughs> the deaf family drama Coda took the big prize as this year's best picture, handing Hollywood's top award to a streaming service for the first time. But what's Oscars night without some controversy? Well, Will Smith and Chris Rock stealing the show in a moment that... Look planned, but wasn't. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! The smack came after the comedian made a joke about the appearance of Smith's wife, Jada. The actor then cursed him. Moments later, Smith won the Oscar for Best Actor for his role in King Richard, apologized to the Academy during his speech. I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to my, all my fellow nominees um, this is a beautiful moment and I'm not I'm not I'm not crying for winning a, an award it's not it's not about winning an award for me it's about being able to shine light on all of the people Tim Smith also said, love will make you do crazy things. An Academy librarian says this was likely the first time there had been real violence on stage at an Oscar ceremony. Los Angeles police say Chris Rock will not be pressing charges. All right, let's... All right, we're going to take you over to Brampton, Ontario right now. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Ontario Premier Doug Ford just announcing that deal on child care. Let's take a listen into some questions. We're funding beyond five years. We wanted to be compensated for offering full day kindergarten. So tell us exactly what we got on those two points, if you could. And again, tell Ontario parents what was so worth waiting for. Well, what I will tell you, this is a fantastic day. It's, it's not about the federal government or provincial government. It's about parents getting $10 a day uh, child care that they're going to see a, a savings immediately on April 1st and again on on uh, the end of the year to 50 percent. But, you know, Ontario is unique uh, when it came to child care, and I'm, I'm very happy that the federal government uh, saw that and was willing to sit down and take the time to get it right. It's easy for, for any side to go out and sign a deal for the sake of signing it. As I said over and over again, let's get a, a, a deal that we can meet the $10 a day childcare. That's uh, flexibility, which again, I appreciate the federal government allowing us the flexibility and the sustainability. So we have the sustainability, we have the flexibility, and uh, we're good to go. Okay, on, so what happens in year seven, then, for example, and on the rebates, um, can you explain why they're retroactive only to April 1st, not January 1st, for example, and how are parents going to get that cash back in their pockets? Is it going to be a check cut by you and your provincial government or by the daycare provider? How do they get that money back? Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pass the, the small, well, you know, the little we into the weeds over to Minister Lecce. Uh, he's been working on it. And I, I got to give uh, Minister uh, Gould and Minister Lecce, you know, this was uh, one of the largest deals that we've ever done. And I always say, isn't it amazing when you work together uh, with the federal government 
and the municipal government, not in this case municipal, yeah, well, it is municipal as well, uh, what we can do. And you, you saw what we were able to do when we went to Windsor. You saw what we were able to do in the largest uh, transit project in North America, $28 billion uh, 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 deal. And along with the green steel, so on and so forth, my point is we're working incredibly well uh, with the federal government. I'm very grateful to the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, and the ministers uh, moving this forward. Go ahead, Minister. Well, thank you uh, for the question. Um, you know, with respect to the savings, we have in this agreement with Canada uh, guaranteed a 25% on average reduction, which will be retroactive to April 1st. Uh, individual um, operators will have to enroll in the program, but parents themselves will not. They will receive an automatic benefit uh, and savings on a monthly basis. Um, operators will make that decision. They have to do so before September. And within 60 days of that decision, the expectation, part of this agreement, it codifies it, that those savings would be uh, trickled down to the, to the parent, to the consumer. Um, and that will benefit about 25% upfront. If an operator takes a bit of time to do that, for example, two months, we're going to cut a retroactive payment to them through the operator directly uh, for families to save roughly 2000 bucks this calendar year and the remaining months between April and, and December. In December, the next 25% will be achieved, or rather, the 50% will be achieved at that point. Um, and that saves, on average, per year, about $6,000. Um, and we believe that type of savings will make a significant difference uh, in the life of a parent who pays some of the most expensive childcare in Canada here in Ontario. So this is a Made in Ontario solution. Uh, it's sustainable fiscally. It has the funding to deliver it as we achieve the federal mandate of $10 by 2025. Next question. Thank you. Okay. Stella Dupuis de Radio Canada. Uh, my question is for Mr. Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau. Are there clauses we cannot hear? We acknowledge that throughout the country, different provinces and territories for years, we are making efforts to answer the needs of the families in their circumstances. And we're sending billions of dollars in agreement with the provinces to start the partnership for uh, daycare, early childhood. We, what exists already, uh, there are different. We have flexibility and recognizing, acknowledging the, uh, the differences of every province. Right? But to be clear, we always put families at the center of everything. We expected during the first year to have 50 percent of costs for family with daycare and to get to five to ten dollars per day in five years to make sure that we're paying well the educators early childhood educators and to create places freeing up, up places in ontario and creating new ones in, in the agreements that we signed we acknowledge the needs of the linguistic minority to have daycare in French in a significant proportion because there are a lot of francophone children. We make sure that there's a certain level of aid for children with uh, special needs. We, within this agreement, we've integrated requirements for uh, special needs children, and it's part of the agreement in Ontario and all the agreements that we signed. My second question, my second question, toujours pour Monsieur Trudeau. Demain, vous présentez votre plan pour atteindre les cibles de réduction de GES. Est-ce que le contexte mondial, l'inflation, l'Ukraine, vont ralentir le Canada dans l'atteinte des cibles de réduction et peut-être vous forcer à revoir vos ambitions? 
Je pense que c'est une question que tout le monde est en train de se poser. Est-ce que la guerre en Ukraine, est-ce que la crise énergétique lancée par la Russie va nous ralentir dans notre but d'atteindre la carboneutralité en 2050 ou même d'atteindre nos cibles de 2030? Et je peux vous dire qu'au contraire, ça nous donne la motivation et l'encouragement d'aller à la place plus vite et d'être plus ferme sur le besoin d'avoir cette transition énergétique pour non seulement plus être dépendant du pétrole et du gaz, mais en particulier de ne plus être dépendant en Europe et ailleurs du pétrole et du, ga et du gaz C'est pour ça Russian que dans le plan oil. que j'ai très hâte de présenter demain à Vancouver, the plan that les Canadiens I Presenting Vancouver and Canadians will see a plan that remains extremely ambitious for uh, to reduce uh, gas uh, warming that increase the temperature of the earth and the world context in order to we need to accelerate this transition because of Putin's decision to invade illegally and destabilize uh, the energy market in the world. But, and uh, the, also with the, to destabilize food security throughout the world. people are wondering what the impact of the war in Ukraine and the energy crisis that is resulting from Vladimir Putin's decision to invade a sovereign neighboring country. And the resolve of the world to reduce its dependency on Russian oil and gas is morphing into a heightened urgency for the transformation of our energy mix towards lower carbon emissions in our energies in the coming years. That's why this is a moment, whether I was two weeks ago in Europe talking very directly with Chancellor Schultz of Germany about our partnerships on hydrogen, whether it's the works we're doing around critical minerals uh, here in Ontario and elsewhere across the country, there is a real opportunity to understand that Vladimir Putin's terrible, mistaken decision to invade a peaceful neighboring country is providing the world, yes, with hardship right now around energy prices, around food insecurity, but also all the more motivation to support each other, to support families as we reduce our dependency on oil and gas altogether and build strong economies and strong uh, environmental economy for the future. Next question. Hi, Prime Minister. Matthew Bingley, Global News. Uh, to the other, it, we've heard already quite a few times now that Ontario has received a better deal than other provinces. To other premiers who may be raising their eyebrows, did did they get a bad deal? And would you extend some of the concessions to those who have already signed on? We had some very, very clear expectations for all provinces. $10 a day, 50% reduction in the first year. Uh, wage grid to support early childhood educators to the level that they needed to be supported, and creation of spaces, especially in the nonprofit sector. Every single province had to meet those thresholds in order to get the allocation of federal funding that was, from the very beginning, distributed across the country. Ontario's allocation was 10.2 billion dollars as we calculated it almost a year ago, and that's exactly what this deal is. But the focus that we had is respecting and understanding that every province has a different system coming into this deal and requires different levels of flexibilities, and different provinces got different levels of flexibility. Ontario, for example, wanted in writing uh, the deal for the sixth year, and we were happy to sign that because, as you may remember, when we announced this childcare funding, it was permanent funding. So all the other provinces also know they get funding on the sixth year, on the seventh year, on the tenth year, on the twentieth year. Um, you know, 
God willing, governments continue to believe in childcare into the future, but I know that parents and activists will make sure they are. That is set out in the framework. So yes, different provinces had different priorities within that, but families in Ontario can know that they've got the same quality of deal that families who signed months ago in other parts of the country and families in other parts of the country can know that they're getting the same quality of child care that we just signed with in Ontario. Follow up. Uh, is for Minister Lecce and if Minister Gould could also weigh in. I'm just wondering about the 86,000 spaces. What benchmarks, I, you mentioned four years, but what benchmarks do you have for an expectation for accountability in creating those spaces in a timely manner? And Minister Gould, if you could just answer what expectations your government has to ensure that those are actually created in that speed. Thank you. Uh, in Ontario, we allocate a billion dollars per annum to build 30,000 childcare spaces over the next five years. We are doing that aggressively on pace, in fact, 22,000 of which have already been approved during the pipeline and are benefiting families in Brampton across uh, Ontario. That has been a pre-existing priority of this government, uh, but this deal further builds upon that because we recognize as we decrease costs for families that demand will rise and therefore there needs to be space allocation guaranteed through this agreement. And so this agreement confirms uh, the creation and funding uh, on the capital side of 86,000 spaces that can be created between now and then, of course, starting in 2019 is the uh, starting point of that. The point is, is that every single year we anticipate growth in space allocation. The agreement speaks to the accountability associated with opening up those spaces in urban and rural communities across Ontario. It's going to provide a massive level of increase because in Brampton, as was reported some years ago in 2018, for every one uh, child care space, there's three kids uh, that exist under the age of five. There's a deficit of spaces. And so we know that already the challenge exists. It'll be exacerbated over time, which is precisely why the government of Canada and Ontario have agreed to an 86,000 space increase over the next five years. And that's going to help us increase the access, decrease the costs, and make life so much more affordable for moms and dads in Ontario. Next question. Yes. Great, thank you for the question. And um, as I said in my remarks, this system is only going to be successful if we can build enough spaces. And as Minister Lecce uh, put it very well, it's 86,000 uh, new spaces. My understanding is that by the end of 2023, about 40,000 of those are to come online. By uh, March 31st of 2026, uh, it'll be over 71,000, and then by December of 2026, it will reach that 86,000 um, mark. Um, and what is important in all of the agreements that we signed across the country, including here in Ontario, is that there is very clear data and reporting mechanisms. Uh, Canada and Ontario and Canada and every province and territory across the country have committed to that transparent dialogue sharing of information to ensure that we are reaching those benchmarks and then to troubleshoot uh, together if there are um, issues that are presented, but there are clear accountability mechanisms um, in this agreement as in all the agreements. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi, Heather Wright, CTV News. Sort of keeping with the space theme, obviously those spaces that have been promised can't be built or created overnight. And there are thousands of families in the province whose arrangements might not include, you know, licensed childcare. They might be in home care or nannies or other alternative arrangements. Will there be any relief for those families who don't yet have their kids in childcare but are spending thousands of dollars nevertheless to care for their kids? Uh, thank you for the question. So this does include licensed home care as well as uh, licensed child care as we know it. Uh, that is important. That's going to help liberalize access to more families who need it. Uh, but I think the basis of your question is very important because we accept in our government that there are inherent costs to raise a child, regardless of how you choose um, to raise a child. It may be some staying with the in-laws or it may be you know, folks uh, heading off to the local YMCA in Brampton that is spectacular at offering brilliant services. 
regardless of your choice in Ontario, specific to this province, we have support for you. There's three components that I think are critical. The first of which is, of course, that for children four and five, they have universal free access to all-day kindergarten. I believe beyond Nova Scotia, we are the only province to offer that. And it's an incredibly important program, educationally stimulating program for kids. The second, uh, the second support we're extending is through the, uh, the continuation of the Ontario Child Care Tax Credit, which provides up to 75% of eligible expenses for roughly 300,000 people. That's $450 million this year and every year in the pockets of parents. That's going to continue. And those are expenses that are you know, it's perhaps sometimes often outside the scope of child care at a local YMCA. It's for other costs that parents incur. And finally, this deal for those families that have their kids at a licensed daycare or um, uh, home care, that they too are going to have access to now what is an increasingly more affordable system starting this year at 50% reduction on average, uh, declining over time to 2025 where it gets to $10 on average. So all of this together is providing choice, and more importantly, providing financial relief for working people. And finally, if there is a, a shortfall, a gap between um, that when, when this deal is revisited, is there a cap in terms of what the federal government will cover, or is that an unlimited number? Um, we made a commitment to make sure that families right across the country have affordable, $10 a day, high quality childcare spaces. And I will remind folks, uh, especially those who've been working on childcare a long time, that's not easy to do. To create ch spaces, well, that can be done. But creating high quality spaces, ooh, that's a bigger challenge. And then making those high quality spaces that we've created affordable at $10 a day, that's even harder. So this is a very difficult thing that we are all embarking on, but with a firm commitment to get it done. That's why the federal government put forward historic amounts in last year's budget to allow us to get to this point. That's why the you know, robust conversations with Ontario, with all provinces and territories have been so important in designing systems that will work. And we've allocated significant amount of funds together for this. But I think one of the things that hasn't been allocated in that frame is the benefits that are going to come in to governments as we see increases in the workforce, as productivity goes up, as families that no longer have to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on the equivalent of a second mortgage as their kids go through childcare can instead invest them in things that matter to them. We are partners in this, and our partnership is focused on the fact that every family deserves affordable, high-quality childcare across the country. And as of today, we can say every family in this country will now, as we build it in the coming years, as we expand on what we already have, will have access to it, and it will make a huge difference, not just in the lives of families today, saving thousands of dollars this year, but in all families to come, to have this system that gets the very best for our kids, for family choices, and for the future. And every step of the way, we will make sure we're there to make sure it's working for families right across the country. Next question. Hi, Jamie Goodfreund from CB24. Just uh, touching upon uh, the 86,000 spaces a little bit more. Uh, for many families in Ontario who've been waiting uh, a year or so on these wait lists, uh, many of them are in underserved, indigenous, and racialized communities. And out of these thousands of spaces, I'm curious, what is the uh, provincial government going to do to target uh, to get those spaces to those families that need it most in, in a timely manner? Well, what we're going to do is make sure we focus on those areas of need, high-priority neighbourhoods, Indigenous communities, work with the communities to get it going as quickly as possible. There's going to be places, too, that we have to put infrastructure funds uh, into 
adding on to schools and, and hopefully building more YMCAs because I love YMCAs and they do tremendous work. So make sure we reach out and continue building that, uh, the YMCAs. And the, do you know what the one part is absolutely critical? Uh, getting the ECEs, getting more people uh, willing to work in, in early childhood education. And uh, to be frank, they deserve more money. That, that's my opinion. We're going to work on that. Uh, and they, they deserve uh, more money. Part of the plan indicates that uh, it's going to improve compensation for uh, our ECEs. Uh, I'm just, is there a specific number? Can they, is there a specific target that they can expect? But it's only for five, to, uh, five years to six to 12. What about for five and under as well? Well, we'll make sure everyone's whole, right? From five and under and up to 12. They, you know, the, the, the job is uh, very, very difficult. It's a job I wouldn't be able to do. They, you know, they, they uh, have a special skill set and they deserve to get paid appropriately and we'll work as quickly as possible and collaborate uh, with the uh, stakeholders. We have time for one uh, last Holly question. Holly McKenzie-Suter with Canadian Press following up on the wage question. Um, under this plan, we're hearing that the minimum wage for ECEs is going to be set at 18 an hour, but they've been calling for 25 and under this plan, they're not going to see $25 an hour for many years. So how can you expect to attract and retain people to this workforce and expand it if it's not the wage they're asking for? Well, again, no, nothing's carved in stone. We want to sit down and, and we see inflation happening. Uh, people need more money to survive, put food on the table to pay their, their rent. This also gives an opportunity for me, more people to get in the workforce. We're short 338,000 people. Uh, to fill the existing jobs uh, that are there. So we're going to work uh, collaboratively with the stakeholders, but I always am a strong believer uh, people have to be treated fairly. And our government is about making sure people are uh, treated fairly and we'll make sure we work uh, hand in hand with them. Thank you. And, uh, just on the, the timing, are people are going to start getting the rebates in the middle of the provincial election campaign. Is the timing a coincidence there? Uh, which rebates? The sticker rebates or rebates for? There's a few rebates going there's around. There's a few on the go. We but just I mean, believe it. Applies to both, I guess. <laughs> well, <laughs> the announcement. You know, but in, uh, no, you know, this is we've worked months, uh, you know, hand in hand with the federal government, and I, I just got to thank them again. Uh, I, I don't remember. I've been in politics a long time, similar to the prime minister and the rest of these folks. Two governments working uh, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Forget the political stripes. We're we're all uh, federally and provincially, municipally working for the people. That's 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 why we're here to make things better. And with the partnership, as I mentioned, no matter if it's uh, Windsor or batteries or or critical minerals or making green steel into Fasco or building the largest transit project in North America, I couldn't do that without the great collaboration. Uh, with the federal government. It's all about building relationships. And we've built up a great relationship and, uh, you know, I have a great relationship with the PM and I have a great relationship with uh, Christia Freeland. Uh, she's, a, she's wonderful. So uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.